in our previous discussion, we established that the declaration of faith, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, is not just a declaration, but this declaration comes with certain conditions that has to be fulfilled. Today we will begin by exploring the first and most crucial condition that is rejecting Ta'ud, all the false deities and powers that are worshipped instead of Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So this first principle is grounded in the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لا انفصام لها والله سميع عليم There is no compulsion in religion. The truth stands out clearly from falsehood. So whoever rejects the ta'ut and believes in Allah has grasped the trustworthy handhold with no breaking it. And Allah is hearing and knowing. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outlines two essential steps to secure the trustworthy handhold. First, rejecting ta'ut to believing in Allah. So what does rejecting ta'ut mean? And why is it the first condition? Ta'ut encompasses anything or anyone that is worshipped, obeyed or followed in opposition to Allah. This can include idols, false religious leaders, oppressive rulers, ideologies or systems that are in opposition with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The importance of rejecting ta'ud lies in its role as a foundation for a true belief in Allah. Without first rejecting false deities, one's belief in Allah remains incomplete. Consider this in the context of participating in democratic elections. In many cases, democratic systems allows for the implementation of laws and rules that are not derived from diving guidance but from human desires and reasoning. By participating in such a system, one might endorse a framework that upholds laws contrary to the principle of Islam, thus failing to reject Ta'ud. This participation could imply acceptance of a system that places human authority on par with or above the authority of Allah, which is a clear violation of the principle of Tawheed. When we declare La ilaha illallah, we start with La ilaha, which means there is no God. This phrase is a rejection of all false deities. This phrase is a rejection of all false gods, all Ta'ud. It's a denial of any system, any entity that claims the right to be worshipped or obeyed in the same manner as Allah. Only after this rejection do we say Illa Allah, meaning except Allah, affirming that only Allah deserves our obedience and worship. This is why rejecting Ta'ud is the first and more crucial condition of La ilaha illallah. Without it, our belief in Allah is tainted by shirk. The scholars of early generations and the companions of the Prophet وسلم, have emphasized this point consistently. And even the Prophet وسلم, said, من قال لا إله إلا الله وكفر بما يعبد من دون الله هرم ماله ودمه وحسابه على الله Whoever says لا إله إلا الله and rejects whatever is worshipped besides Allah, their life and property are protected and the recognition is with Allah. This hadith highlights that the protection of one's life and property under Islam not only declares the oneness of Allah, but also rejects all tawarit, the plural of ta'ud. Why is this rejection so critical? Historically, people have often acknowledged Allah's existence and power, but they failed to reject all intermediaries and systems that oppose Him. This is evident even today, where people might profess belief in Allah, yet adhere to ideologies, practices or systems that contradict Islamic teachings. This contradiction dilutes the essence of Tawheed, the core of our faith. The rejection of Tawheed is so vital that it precedes the belief in Allah in the Quranic verse we discussed. Allah wants us to understand that before we can embrace faith, we must clear our hearts and minds of all allegiances 
to anything that stands against him. This is not just a theoretical concept, but a practical reality that affects how we live, the choices we make and the systems we support. In conclusion, rejecting Tawud is not just a condition of faith, it is a foundation which upon all other aspects of belief rest. By understanding and fulfilling the first condition, we purify our declaration of La ilaha illallah and align ourselves fully with the worship of Allah alone. This is the path to success in both this world and the hereafter. May Allah help us understanding and living upon this declaration. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.